more than 12 billion miles from Earth, past the edges of the solar system, Voyager 2 has sent back a signal. Not a normal one, not just data. This was different, strange, unexplainable, according to scientists. The probe has just made an impossible encounter, one that contradicts everything we thought we knew about space. But what did Voyager 2 really find out there? Could it be a cosmic anomaly, a phenomenon that defies physics? Or has it made contact with something we're not ready to understand? Let's dive deep into the void, because Voyager 2 might have just whispered a secret from the stars that humanity has been trying to avoid. Voyager 2's story didn't begin with advanced computers or billion-dollar committees. It began in 1965 with a doctoral student named Gary Flandro, a pencil and a realization that would change human history. Flandro noticed something that no one else did. Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune were slowly aligning, a cosmic formation that only happens once every 176 years. This alignment meant that a single spacecraft could bounce from planet to planet using their gravity, cutting a 30-year journey into just 12. NASA jumped on this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Thus, Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 were born. Launched in 1977, Voyager 2 was the real explorer of the two. While Voyager 1 raced ahead to grab snapshots of Jupiter and Saturn, Voyager 2 took the longer path, reaching Uranus in 1986 and Neptune in 1989. Along the way, it discovered unknown moons, icy rings, and the coldest place in the solar system. It flew over volcanoes that spewed nitrogen, captured images of wind speeds exceeding 1,000 miles per hour, and even discovered that planets once thought to be barren were far more alive than we imagined. But then, after passing Neptune, Voyager 2 went silent, at least in the public eye. Its camera was turned off, its mission was complete, or so we thought. In truth, Voyager 2 was just beginning its most dangerous and mysterious journey into the darkness of interstellar space. In 2018, Voyager 2 did something no other spacecraft had done before with working instruments. It crossed the heliopause, the invisible boundary where the solar wind no longer dominates and the true interstellar medium begins. This moment marked its official entry into deep space. What it found there stunned the scientific community. Unlike Voyager 1, which encountered chaotic magnetic shifts at the edge of the solar system, Voyager 2's crossing was eerily smooth. The magnetic field remained stable, calm, too calm. This was not what models had predicted. According to decades of research, the magnetic environment outside the heliopause should fluctuate with the sun's 11-year cycle. But Voyager 2's instruments showed none of that. It was as if it had entered a region of space untouched by the chaos of stars. But even more disturbing was what came next. Scientists began detecting subtle frequency disturbances in the plasma wave data, patterns that didn't match any known solar or cosmic behavior. A low hum, a constant vibration, and that hum didn't come from our galaxy's core. It wasn't background radiation. It was local, as in near the spacecraft. What was Voyager 2 approaching? A field, a force, or something entirely unnatural? The word impossible gets thrown around a lot, but what Voyager 2 encountered was truly outside the realm of explanation. In mid-transmission, the Deep Space Network, NASA's global array of massive radio antennas, received a faint, fragmented signal from Voyager 2 that was corrupted, but not in the usual way. The pattern was not random. It was structured, as if something had interfered with the data mid-transmission, but preserved its shape. For a brief moment, communication with Voyager 2 was lost entirely. Then, inexplicably, the spacecraft seemed to reorient its antenna, 
and reconnect on its own, a maneuver it had not been instructed to do. The signal returned, but something had changed. Among the recovered data was a burst of readings that didn't align with anything in the known environment. Magnetic spikes with no solar source. Radiation patterns resembling nothing we've seen near stars or nebulae, and, most bizarrely, a directional shift. It was as if Voyager 2 had dodged something. NASA, as expected, downplayed the event, citing cosmic interference or onboard error. But within internal circles, engineers referred to it as the encounter. Because the moment Voyager 2 sent that data, it was no longer following a clean trajectory. It had been altered, not by us, not by software, but perhaps by contact. Let's talk about the unspoken part of the Voyager missions. The golden record. Both probes carry a gold-plated copper disc encoded with music, greetings, images of life on Earth, and instructions for how to find us. A cosmic invitation crafted by Carl Sagan and his team in the hopes that one day someone or something would find it and understand. But what if they already did? Voyager 2's impossible. Signal, its moment of disorientation, its altered path, and the hum detected nearby all point to one chilling possibility, that something noticed it. That deep in the silence between stars, Voyager 2 passed through a region of space that wasn't empty, but occupied. Maybe it was just a pocket of strange particles. Maybe it was a natural phenomenon beyond our comprehension. Or maybe it was a warning. Because shortly after the signal was recovered, Voyager 2's orientation shifted again, this time pointing not away from Earth, but subtly back toward it. Why? Some believe it's just a navigational correction. Others believe it's returning. But a growing number of astronomers quietly believe that Voyager 2 has crossed a threshold, that what it found in deep space is not something we can label or understand. Not yet. And if that's true, then the impossible encounter was only the beginning. In deep space, precision is survival. Voyager 2's orientation its antenna positioning, and every millisecond of transmission is the result of meticulously calculated programming. That's what made what happened next even more disturbing. After its so-called impossible encounter, Mission Control noticed something subtle and yet massive. Voyager 2 had changed its angle. Not its speed, but its attitude, the way its instruments and sensors were aimed. This wasn't just a wobble. It was a redirection. But here's the catch. No one had instructed it to do so. The autonomous systems on board Voyager 2 are designed only to react to specific errors, like loss of signal strength or orientation drift. But none of those protocols had been triggered. The probe, seemingly on its own, chose to look elsewhere. Was it avoiding something? Was it trying to see something it had detected just outside our reach? NASA engineers immediately ran simulations to test for mechanical anomalies. Maybe an ancient gyroscope shifted or cosmic dust bumped a sensor. But all diagnostics came back clean. No fault, no interference. This left only one explanation. Voyager 2 did something it was never designed to do. That single adjustment sparked a new wave of fear within the project team, because if the probe is now choosing where to look, the question becomes terrifyingly simple. Why? In the days following the data anomaly and unexplained realignment, something even more unsettling occurred. Voyager 2 stopped transmitting scientific data altogether. It wasn't dead. Communications were still active. NASA could still ping the spacecraft and receive telemetry. Basic health updates showing power levels, temperatures, system statuses, all normal. But the scientific instruments, the very ones monitoring cosmic rays, magnetic fields, plasma waves, 
had gone silent. The probe had essentially muted itself. NASA didn't announce this immediately. Internally, teams debated whether it was a technical fault or an intentional fail-safe response. In one internal report leaked to a forum of astrophysics students, a section was titled Potential Autonomous Instrument Suppression Protocol. But no such protocol was ever designed into Voyager 2's original system. If this silence is intentional or influenced, it means one thing. The probe encountered something it couldn't transmit. Either the data it recorded exceeded its ability to translate it, or it was stopped from trying. The silence, in this case, speaks louder than any signal. As whispers of Voyager 2's strange encounter spread across the global scientific community, the theories began flooding in. Some were grounded in physics, others, not so much. A growing number of physicists are reevaluating a theoretical concept known as dark plasma, an exotic state of matter that exists only in the deep interstellar void. According to this theory, Voyager 2 may have passed through a stream of this plasma rich with magnetic anomalies and gravitational inconsistencies that can interfere with sensors and onboard systems, but even proponents admit that doesn't explain the signal structure. Others turn to more controversial ideas. One paper, quietly circulated among SETI researchers, suggests the pattern in the corrupted signal resembled compressed data encoding, similar in structure to early Earth binary, though no one could decipher its contents. Its non-random structure led some to believe it was, at the very least, engineered. Still more radical thinkers proposed the possibility of passive alien technology, not a ship or a signal, but a kind of surveillance node, something left behind in deep space, a trap or a listener. Whatever Voyager 2 encountered, it appears to have changed how the spacecraft is behaving, and if our oldest probe, built with 1970s tech and powered by decaying plutonium, has stumbled across something designed by a superior intelligence, then perhaps that intelligence is now aware of us. And that raises questions we're not ready to answer. The Voyager missions were always about more than science. They were symbols of hope, curiosity, and humanity's desire to reach beyond itself. But now, with Voyager 2 behaving unpredictably, some are beginning to wonder if that desire might carry a cost. Every signal it sends could be the last. Every moment of contact is a borrowed miracle. And yet, we keep listening, because even in its silence, Voyager 2 is telling us something about the nature of space, about the boundaries of understanding, about the risks of exploring the unknown, and here's where it gets truly philosophical. If Voyager 2 has, in fact, encountered something out there, something real, intelligent, and active, then humanity just crossed a threshold it can never return from. From this point on, we are no longer alone in the dark. The implications are staggering. Defense protocols, new models of the galaxy, shifts in theology, science, politics, everything changes. Or maybe nothing changes, not because the encounter wasn't real, but because we choose not to believe it. Because believing means accepting that Voyager 2 might not just be a machine. It might now be a messenger. Voyager 2 was never built to survive this long. It was never meant to go this far, and it certainly wasn't designed to encounter the impossible. But maybe that's exactly why it did. In a universe filled with silence, this tiny probe, made of copper wires and fading plutonium, just may have pierced the veil. It may have crossed into a region we weren't ready to understand. And what it found there, it didn't shout, it didn't attack, it simply changed the way Voyager 2 behaves. We can fix the hardware, we can explain away the glitches, we can analyze the signals and file the data, but we can't undo the encounter. Because now we know something is out there, something that doesn't follow our rules, something that may have heard our message 
and responded in its own strange way, not through words, not through radio, but through action, through interference, through quiet redirection. Voyager 2 didn't just pass a boundary of space, it passed a boundary of meaning. It's no longer just a machine, it's a witness, a messenger, maybe even a warning. And so now, the question is no longer, what did Voyager 2 find? The question is, what happens when it returns? Let your audience sit with that silence, then close with, tell us what you believe. Was this just cosmic coincidence, or the first contact we've long feared and quietly hoped for? Drop your thoughts in the comments. Subscribe for more untold secrets from the edge of the universe.